Well, perhaps we have uh, three takeaways uh, from uh, Fiji. Um, uh, the first one is the uh, regulatory dialogue uh, and the active engagement between financial regulators and telecom regulators uh, to provide an enabling environment is fundamental. Uh, Fiji since 2017 has served as a platform uh, bringing together regulators from the financial sector and the telecom sector the international organizations, digital financial services ecosystem stakeholders uh, to work together towards advancing financial inclusion. Uh, this is true of any digital transformation project where domain experts from the digital or ICT domain co-create uh, with the domain experts from finance, healthcare, transportation, or any other vertical uh, being transformed uh, through this digital transformation journey. In the case of Fiji, uh, the partners from the banking sector were the World Bank and the Bank of International Settlements. And from the ICT or digital sector, it has been the ITU. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation provided generous financial support and especially guidance uh, towards achieving financial inclusion globally. So uh, that's the first one. The second is the technical guidance. Um, we had three working groups on digital ID, security, and electronic payments. And these groups developed uh, technical knowledge that is shared globally um, on these areas. The first one uh, on the security infrastructure and trust uh, led by the ITU, we developed nine technical reports. The electronic payments acceptance led by the World Bank developed two reports and the uh, digital identity uh, group developed two reports including a policy toolkit. So this technical guidance I would say is the one of the key deliverables takeaways from, uh, from Fiji over the course of the past three or four years. Uh, in particular, in the area led by the ITU, uh, a number of these reports find their, found their way towards uh, international standards and reports published by ITUT study groups. One in the area of quality of service and experience of the network, another on enhancing security of the SS7 protocol, the fundamental international telephony signaling protocol developed by the ITU, and the third is on identity management and the authentication assurance framework. And the third takeaway of Fiji is the country implementations. On the ground, teams from the World Bank and the ITU working hand in hand with the telecom and the financial regulators and experts towards implementing the uh, payments aspects of financial inclusion or the PAFI report the reports from the ITU focus group on digital financial services, and of course, the Fiji working group reports. And that experience uh, will be shared in the symposium. So these are probably the three uh, takeaways from and lessons learned from Fiji. COVID-19, I think, has highlighted the importance of financial inclusion when you cannot have contact between governments and people, for example, to disperse um, social aid during uh, the pandemic. Um, it has become very clear to many member states around the world, especially in developing countries, how critical it is to have financial uh, services through digital means and through mobile phones. So what we will uh, see in the future beyond Fiji is an acceleration and a scaling of Fiji beyond the three implementation countries. We have seen a surge in demand by the member states of the ITU in support in the areas of regulation and technology to scale Fiji uh, beyond these three countries. The second area is to leverage the ITU Digital Financial Services Security Lab and make it available to member states who are embarking on financial inclusion. This DFS Security Lab is a product of our learning over the past six years, since 2014, uh, of the ITU in the Digital Financial Services. And this lab provides 
tools for security audit and testing of DFS applications based on the USSD channel, the SIM toolkit and the Android uh, and developer resources for the FIDO Alliance, uh, which provides authentication. So a number of technical areas related to security and authentication, where the lab will enable DFS regulators to build confidence and trust in the use of digital financial services, assess digital financial service provider security compliance, and enhance adoption of interoperable authentication technologies. And the third area beyond Fiji is to embark on open APIs or application programming interfaces, which are critical in the digital finance area and the fintech area. APIs are sort of the glue between the applications and the various uh, data, data sets and um, uh, services in, in this area. So this Fiji symposium is the third and final symposium in a series of three. Uh, the first one was in India. The second was hosted by Egypt. This year, we have a fully digital uh, Fiji symposium, and it is spread over time from 18th of May to the 24th of June, with about four sessions per week, two sessions per day, and two days per week. So um, we expect to have this uh, symposium opened by a head of state, demonstrating the importance uh, that member states give to this financial inclusion and to Fiji. Uh, it will be closed by a minister. Um, and in the course of those four weeks, uh, we will be doing stock taking and sharing experience from the working groups and the country implementations. Uh, we will have a new track focused on gender inclusion because many uh, women around the world, young and, and older, are not financially included and many are really uh, acting as a, a key factor in the economic growth of their locality, village or country and having them included provides them with more autonomy, uh, more capability to grow and uh, really getting them included in the economic cycle. So we have a very special focus on not only including people in general uh, uh, in the financial sector, but we have a special focus on gender inclusion. <music>